Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for coming and joining me here in my shop. Today is October 29th. Now, I posted one video on this where I gave it a fairly thorough test over as best I could in my uh, my antique radio shop and uh, what I found was basically uh, one channel seems okay more or less and the other channel seems to be completely dead. Uh, what I've been asked to do with this unit is uh, change all the electrolytic capacitors. You can see the parts over here. Um, now the first video I did uh, could be six weeks ago and my expectation was I was going to work on it right away uh, but I've had to wait six weeks because for the life of me, I could not find the parts I purchased. Um, here they are now, but this is a new purchase. So unfortunately, it's been sitting and waiting for parts to come in the mail. They arrived a couple days ago. So, so I have the capacitors I need to do it. This is a Quad 3034, uh, a very nice preamp, which I uh, went through in the last video. Um, there's about 20 electrolytic capacitors in here. You can see them here and here and here, a couple over here. And I really wasn't even going to video any of this until all of them were changed. I, I didn't plan to uh, video myself changing them. It's just fiddly work. So uh, what I plan to do is, after they're done, test the unit out and see how wonderful it works after doing uh, all these changes. But I did spot something a little bit peculiar and I just wanted to show it on video before I started. We look at the back side. This is a nicely built unit from the uh, early 1980s, I believe. Uh, so it's full of chips and all that. Um, what I noticed as I was examining this and just getting ready to, to start is all the soldering is extremely consistent all through here. So this was probably you know, bath soldered or done done something like that. Certainly not a person with a soldering iron, except right here right here which is one of the electrolytic capacitors that are in here it's this guy here he looks the same as his brother there they look identical it looked to me like there's a two two channel thing happening in here in this part of the unit but i think i'll i'll, I'll give you a close-up look here i'm pretty sure this has been resoldered here that raises a couple of interesting questions let's just take a closer look at it See, you can't actually see that. Okay. Oop. I'm using a very stiff camera support here. Okay, camera, try and focus on that. Good. Uh, we got a bit of a light problem, so I'm just going to tip this up. Yeah, I think you can see it in the camera, even if it is a touch out of focus. These two appear to be soldered differently than all the rest. You see all the rest are kind of a, a uh, flat, sort of not so shiny condition. But these two right here, this one and this one, they appear to be re-soldered. Nothing else on this board looks like that. Everything else looks the same, the factory industrial type soldering. So so what happened here? Again, the uh, capacitors are identical on the top. So I'm going to take a wild guess. This is just a guess. That uh, after they manufactured this unit and then tested it out, they found a problem. And they tracked it down to either the original component being defective here and they had to replace it with another identical one, or they just resoldered it underneath and presto, everything worked. Tempting for me to just resolder it and see if that doesn't bring the whole unit back to life again. Because it does look like there's one channel here and another channel here. Very clearly it looks like that. That's extremely tempting. Well, I decided an even closer look is warranted here. See the uh, connection with the plus sign near it, and then the other one is back here. They're clearly different than all the rest. Clearly, something happened here. I 
don't think the owner has ever had this into the shop for a repair, which is why I think it must have happened in the factory. Plus the uh, component on the surface is uh, identical. The two of them are identical. Could this be the problem? That, that closer solder joint doesn't look so great. Now I've wiggled the component underneath. I'm going to try that again with the close-up camera on it. This is tricky to keep it all from falling over while I do this. Okay, got my finger on it. I'm wiggling it. Anything moving on that screen? No. These are solid. Solidly soldered. Shapers. I still wonder, maybe I should just resolder these and uh, see if that doesn't just restore the whole unit right there. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I mean, maybe this will be the first one I replace. Also. You can really see the difference in the soldering now because that's me waving my arms around. You can see my reflection in it, but you can't see my reflection in anything else. Okay, let's give it a let's give it the uh, a once over with some solder here. My uh, soldering irons may be just a little big for this job. I'm usually soldering very big components and big old radios. There we are. Well, I have to, re you know, I have to test this unit now to see if that was really the problem. Uh oh. Right. Did you get to go? Yeah, of course. You never pass up a visit to. Okay, so this radio is going to be the source. I'm going to use as a battery-operated oper radio. It's not plugged in the wall, so it cannot be a source of a hum because I have some problems with hums in here. And uh, so you can see the output of this is connected here on the radio input. And these outputs go straight over to my sound system over yonder. And I'm going to have this plugged into a regular outlet, and then we are going to listen to it, not through the speaker here, but straight into my sound recording system. And hopefully we can find out, did the dead channel come to life or not? Okay, so I think I just have to flip this over. There we go. Let me put on my own headphones so I can hear what you're hearing. I seldom wear headphones in my shop because of the uh, the dangers that come along with it, having a, having a wire hooked up to your head. Okay, so we'll put balance, center, volume, minimum, and uh, right now the uh, sound is off on my system, on my recording system, so we can't hear anything for sure. The speaker's down, but I think the sound here is at the regular type of level that something like this would be looking for on its inputs. Put the tone control at zero. Okay, in fact, I'm going to turn it up a little bit here. I have no idea how loud this is going to be. This, 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 well, let's see what happens. I'll flip it on. radio. Could be it's just not putting out enough for... Okay, I've got it cranked up full. Ah, neither side working. Let's flip this mono switch here. Did I not plug it into the radio input? Rad radio. Definitely in the output. Yeah. Okay, got some kind of problem here. I got to sort out. So first test didn't work. 
Okay, I think I have things sorted out. Let's just check. Okay, I'm plugging back in. There's a whole series of problems with my uh, sound system there. <laughs> I got into. Okay, turning up this a little bit. Yuck. Okay, turn it back down. He's a witch! <laughs> there we go. That's, that's the bare knuckle round. <laughs> All right. It is time now for the firing line. In my hand, I have a list of questions on opinions brought to you by Ron McLean. Ron McLean. If he has an opinion, I'd sure like to hear it. <laughs> In 2018, Fox News unveiled their new opinion-based slogan, which was what? Aisha? Lock her up, Indians. <laughs> you know, that's so weird, it just might work for Fox. Peter? Uh, Fox's new slogan was, Does Dretriod mas Russia an opinion maxa? <laughs> well done. You can see there's no output from one channel. Still. Opinion done right. Are you sure that's uh, that's not opinions done third Reich? <laughs> nice. Positive? I'll give you two and a half for that. Excellent late contribution. <laughs> Individuals who wish to be considered as writers for the CBC's online opinion section are encouraged to do what? Peter. B85. <laughs> Uh, no, Peter. <laughs> Aisha? Uh, they're encouraged to stop sending carrier pigeons. They're making a mess of the Glenn Gould statue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, if you uh, would like to be considered as a writer for the CBC's online opinion section, you're encouraged to participate in the comments section and then see what happens. <laughs> Author Jane Austen has said where an opinion is general, it's also usually what? Aisha? Uh, she said, where an opinion is general, it is always usually Elizabeth Bennet misunderstanding Mr. Darcy's reserved yet keen affection for her fine eyes, alight with the whimsy and wit of a vigorous debate, because he has loved her for all these years. Okay. Enough of that. So that's the uh, CBC here in Canada. They put on various kinds of entertainment radio shows. Uh, Lots of news, lots of entertainment, and that's that's one of their <laughs> shows there. Unfortunately, you have to be a Canadian to kind of understand most of those jokes because it surrounds our politicians and stuff like that. Okay, but the fact is that this is still operating in just one channel, so resoldering that didn't do anything. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, do all those capacitors and see what happens. I wonder if I should do that one. No. Should I? Should I just? Maybe I should do. So I have everything set up here, uh, which is helpful too. I should maybe just do this one and see what happens. Hey, that's, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, here it is. It's a 50 volt 2.2 capacitor. Let's see what this guy says about it. What did we get? <laughs> I thought it was a cat stuck in something or something. Something outside my house, anyway. So we're getting 2,000. We're getting 2,400 nanofarad, which is 2.4 microfarads. Um, that doesn't seem to me to indicate that there's a serious problem with this. Let me get out a replacement for it and see how it compares. OK, 
Okay, got a brand new 2.250 volt guy here. So it's 2300 nanofarad, which is 2.3, and the ESR and the V loss. I'm not sure really how important those are. Uh, both the same. Both the same. Apparently nothing wrong with this guy. But we're going to put in the new ones. Okay, so that's got to not be the cause of one channel dead. Well, I've gotten very cold feet doing the capacitor replacement thing. I'm very worried that replacing all these capacitors, there's 20 of them, there's a good chance I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to introduce another fault into the unit. So I decided to do uh, some uh, signal tracing and try to locate or at least get an idea where the uh, fault might be in here. The slight hum you hear is coming out of a uh, signal tracer over here, this old guy here. And the signal tracer input is right here. And what I've been doing is I've been tracing the signal back from the input part, the input area the radio right down and I've been literally looking at where the signal path probably is because there's a two channel thing happening so I should be seeing the same component side by side one channel or the other channel and I just work my way through uh, not knowing really exactly what I'm doing but nevertheless I'll show you what I found here so we'll start right at the inputs here hi everybody Thanks a lot. And we drop down to here. Two channels coming in. I should turn this off mono, I think. It shouldn't make any difference. Come along over here. Come along here. Yeah, right. There's the two channels there. There's two identical resistors here. So, we're in trouble right here already. Uh, you know, unless I'm mistaken, and these aren't the two channels, but for crying out loud, they must be. They must be. If I flip it onto mono. So there it is. So the problem is right in this area. And what is in this area? You have this chip, these transistors. So I'm going to try to find this area on the schematic. Good luck to me, but I think it could be as simple as one of these transistors has, uh, has failed. Right in here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I feel a lot better about doing this than just shotgunning capacitors. Shotgunning capacitors is risky business, for sure. Okay, uh, a little bit of signal tracing, and here's what I found. So the balance control is right here. These are the terminals for the balance control. These two capacitors, C48 and C54, are the feeds to the balance control. Really? Other side. Part of this Help. Signals getting to the balance control. The output of the balance control is on, there's three terminals here, is on one, one of the three. This one, After where? and this one. Anything not? Okay, now did I get that right? I did not get that right. So on this one, of course, and this one. Oh, you can't see a thing. <laughs> Let's do it this way. That's good. You didn't see me make a mistake. So here's the capacitor in the input to the. Uh, balance control, one side, input on the other side, output from one side, output from the other. 
the balance control is seems to be where the signal ends. I'm moving it now. Right, there's a short on the short on there. Now wait a minute. Wouldn't wouldn't it wouldn't it make a little bit of noise in the uh, here? Let's do this. I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to inject a signal uh, into those. Turn this down. Or turn down the radio. I'm going to use just my finger or something like that. Turn up. So you're, you're, all this rumbly noise is just junk because of my shop. So not to pay too much attention to it. Let's start by trying to inject the signal just by holding this tool. See how sensitive this is. Don't hear a thing. Let's turn it up. You can hear the uh, input signal leaking through here. So this time, we don't hear anything. Okay, so I'm going to touch it with my finger. Lay it down. Not enough to make the sound. Try here. I need, I need a better signal injection. Better signal injection. Hmm. It's a little bit surprising to me that this didn't work. Let me try a different uh, screwdriver. Maybe this one's too corroded. Got a nice shiny one here. Volume down. Whoa! Bingo! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> now that's the one that doesn't make sound. Maybe I touched the wrong one. I don't think so. You can hear that. Maybe this is open somewhere. It's all the way up to a resistor up here, R76. And then it goes right into a chip, IC17 filter. And I'm a little worried about doing this. So. Let's just review this again. So signal path travels up this, this ribbony area here on the two thin lines. One terminates in R80 and the other one continues on terminates in R76. Let's go on the other side of R76 with my uh, crummy signal injection. So the trace is continuous. It's suggesting the balance control is not working. The balance control is a mechanical element in here. Uh, mechanical stuff tends to break. Um, I'll just shoot a little cleaner in it and see if that'll, that'll do it. Let's take a look at it. Let me turn this off. Let me turn this off so we're not listening to that. back and forth. Can't feel anything. It feels perfectly smooth. But it feels very, very uh, flimsy. It feels very light. And 
it wouldn't take much for it to lose contact but if it were dirty you know you would hear you hear noise along it so I, I'm not sure dirt is the deal here um, so often pieces that are connected to what people can touch like like this and like this these things get mechanically worked a bit and that's enough to maybe crack a uh, solder connection on the board now, these guys look really rugged this this whole unit looks really good not so much this guy um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what's stopping it I think it's I think the I think it's hitting the end of the opening there so you could apply some mechanical force to it but you'd have to be putting the balance control to its extreme position a little unusual Let's pull the power cord right out the back so I don't have it operating for sure. Take a look at very carefully at the solder connections here. As soon as I can find my camera. <laughs> Man, camera, where'd you go? There it is. Here, as I say, the unit's off and unplugged. Now well, they don't look cracked. Those three, none of them look cracked. pretty solid. Well, I'm going to resolder those connections and see if that doesn't wake this unit up. Could it be that simple? Okay, I've, uh, whoops, I got the wrong camera. So I've resoldered six connections in here. They're listening to my radio speaker. Now I'm going to plug the unit in and turn it on. I give this, I don't know, maybe a 20% chance of having fixed it. Okay, I'm going to switch it on. I'm going to put it on mono so we can hear. I'm going to turn up my levels here. Hello, hello. Uh, so, oh, turn up the volume here. She will not be able to attend. It's you mono. Still one channel. Both signals present at the tone control or balance control. Both sig one signal absent afterwards. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. The next step is to spray some cleaner into it. As, as much as that just seems ridiculous. Mainly cloudy today with the wind coming out of the east, high of 13 degrees. Tonight cloudy, chance of showers overnight, low of 7. Yeah, if this doesn't work, what I could do is just bypass this uh, balance control completely. Wouldn't that be the case? Just do away with it. Here we go. Yuck. Okay, I should really have the unit on. We should be listening. Whoops. 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 I put my headphones on. Okay. Volume down, power on, power on, power. Okay. Sounds like one channel to me. Here's mono. Stereo. Put it back and forth. Seems like a temporarily short it and see if that. Because what is this? This is just a resistor. It goes all the way from probably from zero up to something big. So probably zero. Zero is probably there. Shouldn't worry about shorting it. Shouldn't be a concern. Okay. 
here now. So we know where the uh, input to it is. There's these two capacitors right here. It's the input. And then the output is way up here. I could, I could go from there to here. I can go from, from there to still right here. Just worried about crossing the channels. That probably shouldn't matter either. Okay, it's got a good trusty clip lead here. It's a bit of a clumsy guy. Uh, with the set off, I'm going to practice a bit here. So we want to go, first we want to stop listening to that. We want to go, for instance, from here. Assume that, assume that this, well, you don't have to assume because they've colored everything. Thank you. So this is a white channel and this is the orange channel. So, so we're on the white. White. It looked to me like it's, if I were to short white, I would go from here to here. And that gets me all on these long lines. And if I were to short orange, that would take me from here, oh, to the other side. To here, that gets me on one of the long lines. Okay, I've done practicing. I hope, oh, well, maybe that wasn't in focus. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it's all about what you hear anyway. Power on. Uh, volume's up on my board. Okay, so we hear one channel. Well, I'm gonna slide this control to the other channel. Don't know which one's the other channel. So I'm bypassing the control, so it doesn't. So either channel. Okay, ignore what I'm saying. I'm muttering. Here we go. Okay, we're there. <laughs> Bad camera angle there, right? Input to the output. Now the other one. Input. I can't help but block it with my hands to the output. Wow, that answers the question right there. It's the balance control. The balance control. I'm crying out loud. Look what I was about to do. Change all the capacitors in here for nothing. The balance control. You know, the first thing with all these things is what is mechanically working? Getting worked, getting moved, getting twisted. That's often where the problems are. You don't need to be a genius to find this kind of stuff and I'm evidence of that. So the name of the game would be to bridge over the balance control and forsake it. Bridge over both sides? Oh, there's somebody at my door. Okay, so I had to get out my oscilloscope and get it out. I had to get my oscilloscope going, figure out just which side is which here, which I've done. So it amounts to me shorting those two terminals back there. There's a triangle of terminals right here. And it's these two. Those two. So you short them temporarily and see what goes on. I'm not sure I want to do it uh, with the set operating, so I'll turn it off. And I think the shorting thing is just going to be a clip lead, just grabbing them both. Okay. The balance control is in the middle, so the balance control is now going to work one side down. Basically, that's all it's going to do. Okay, the other end of the clip lead is nice and safe. Volume down, power on, here we go. Hello. What, uh, what happened there? It appear to be... Oh. Okay. Oh, I know what's going on over here. Okay, 
my own audio system was turned down. There it is. In the middle. Tone should... You still get a little bit of balance action there. That's the solution. Short those two. off the excess wire here. Okay, take a little look. I might just need a little more solder. Okay, ready for the test. Power's off. This plug is a little wonky. Okay, volume down, power on. Okay, up with my audio system. False impression. False. All false. 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 All wrong. Of course, the radio signal we're listening to, although it's FM, is in mono also. And that's not helping either. Okay, looks like I blew it here. Looks like I just probably just hooked the wrong thing to the wrong thing. So I've got one channel spread onto both sides of the balance control, so to speak. Okay, gotta examine this more closely. I, I didn't realize didn't realize what I was doing when I was checking with my scope. Okay, here we go. Uh, so there's the short I put in, I put across the proper way. If I'd looked more closely at the markings on the board, it could have figured out what I was doing was not right. Okay, we're gonna give it a try now. I'm gonna flip it right over. So you can see the nice face of it here. Controls level, volume down, balance in the middle, power on. Okay, my own sound system level up. Give it a little bit now. Okay, unfortunately they're playing music on a station that almost always has talk, so I have to watch out for uh, a uh, copyright hit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just disable one channel. Afternoon. Hey, I'm Odario Williams, you're listening to CBC Music Live. Half Moon Run began with a jam session back in 2009. Now, jamming is still important to their creative process, Fantastic. even though it didn't show up wow. much on their first... Other well, inputs, that's all been checked out. Tone control, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I did a fairly extensive video of me trying to... Uh, analyze or detect rather all the problems that exist with this unit. I checked tone, balance, all that kind of stuff and what I really deduced in the end after an awful lot of testing was one channel doesn't work at all. The other channel is just fine. So let's take a look. So I'm not going to put that video on YouTube. Instead this will be the video that goes up. So this is a very cool uh, device. Um, radio, disc, CD and tape input has a record output on the back mono and stereo of course and these F1 F2 and SL 
So these cause uh, a uh, treble cut, if you like. Um, the slightly different levels. We can hear it. I think we can hear it. What I do to it? <laughs> where where to go? Oh, I know. I got it down here. Ah, playing music again. So you'll have to trust me. Uh, one of these uh, starts the uh, the knee of the bend there is at like uh, I don't know 12 kilohertz and the other one's at eight or something like that, and this doubles the rate. So if you turn these on and you push that, you double the rate. You really really get a big cut at that point. The bass control is interesting. It says bass lift. It's on zero right now. In decibels, three, six, nine. Or when you go down, it's in hertz, so it's it's changing it's changing you know the, the, not this knee but the other the other the other knee the low the low knee, which we can't hear. I don't have the sound here good enough to, to really hear this kind of stuff. But all my testing when I did it before showed all this was working just fine. And then I have this interesting tilt control. So in this case, when you move the control this way, you're adding. What are you doing? <laughs> you're adding, you know what? I don't know what you're doing. You're adding you're adding one here and taking away one there and I can't remember. Um I think it's just a trouble going up and down, but I can't remember now. Well let's listen to it. We can listen to it for a moment, can't we? Let's turn this off. Put this like this. Put this like this. Put those like that. They're still playing music? Yeah. There we go. Uh, so you hear it? Blinding. Sounds like the trouble went. The star. Trouble high. So I think this is probably doing the bass and this is doing the trouble. I think. Very nice. Great. Wow. Okay. So that's quite a lesson. A lesson I didn't need to learn. I already know this lesson. Don't do anything you don't have to do. Don't get in there and just start changing capacitors and think that's that's a miracle underway. Always look for indications. Um, look at this thing. Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you how this works. It's full of chips for crying out loud. The uh, there's a troubleshooting guide in the manual. It's 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 if you had it on paper, it would be as big as my bench here, with about a hundred different little boxes and arrows to try to track through. But I just applied a little bit of common sense. Look for something that's mechanical, especially with a device like this, a well-built device like this. I did check it for heat at one point, uh, not on video, but I, I have a thermal viewer. I checked it, there's nothing getting hot in here at all. So uh, no, no, reason to, uh, no, no reason to be suspicious of anything unusual, like maybe a chip that's, that's got a short in it and it's overheated. Okay, talking too much because I'm, I'm excited, because I'm happy, because Wow, this was going to be a horrible job changing all those capacitors. No value is going to come out of it. Maybe going to introduce a second or third fault in it. Good luck sorting all that out. Once you have two faults, yikes. Even the huge multi-page troubleshooting guide says right in it, and I'm tangled up here in cords, that if there's two faults, you're not going to find it with their troubleshooting, their 100-step hundred, their hundred troubleshooting guide. So, wow. Okay, yeah, I'm excited. I needed a win, I got one. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I don't know what's gonna be on the bench next. <laughs>